When Christopher Columbus sailed to the Caribbean on his second voyage, he carried with him something that would change the world forever, sugarcane cuttings. Today, that same plant is processed in factories around the world using techniques that combine centuries-old chemistry with modern automation. In this video, we're tracing sugar's complete journey from field to table. You'll see how raw cane gets crushed to extract juice that looks nothing like sugar. How that juice is clarified using methods first developed hundreds of years ago, and how modern factories can package thousands of bags per hour. Whether you're a food science enthusiast or just curious about how everyday things are made, you're about to see sugar in a whole new light. Before we dive in, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel so you never miss out on more fascinating stories like this one. What does a sugarcane field look like right before harvest? Picture tall, bamboo-like stalks stretching across thousands of acres, ready for their transformation journey. These fields of green gold can reach heights of 10 to 15 feet, swaying gently in the breeze as they await the harvesters. The mature cane develops a distinctive golden-brown hue when it reaches peak sugar content. That's when farmers know it's time to act. Modern sugar production starts with a critical decision in the fields. Two distinct harvesting methods compete for efficiency. Across developing regions of Asia, Africa, and Latin America, workers wield machetes with the precision of master craftsmen. These harvesters make quick, clean cuts at the base of each stalk, then swiftly remove the leafy tops in a second motion, a technique refined over generations. The tops contain significantly less sugar, so removing them immediately improves the overall quality of the harvest. While traditional methods rely on human skill, industrial nations have embraced mechanization. In Brazil, Australia, and the United States, massive mechanical harvesters dominate the landscape. These industrial giants process entire rows of cane in minutes, cutting stalks into smaller billets of 8 to 10 inches, making them easier to transport. A single harvester can process up to 100 tons per hour. These machines solve labor shortages but introduce new challenges. The cutting action damages cane tissue, triggering enzymatic reactions that begin breaking down sucrose immediately. Mechanical cutting also leaves more plant material mixed with the harvest, requiring additional cleaning. Harvested cane must reach processing facilities within 24 hours before natural enzymes reduce the sucrose content. This creates an intricate logistical system. During harvest season, trucks and specialized rail networks operate continuously to deliver fresh cane to mills. In India, smaller carts collect cane from fields before transferring to larger vehicles. Australia's Queensland region uses dedicated railway systems spanning thousands of kilometers, hauling up to 2,000 tons per trip. Timing is everything in sugarcane harvesting. Farmers monitor sucrose levels, typically aiming for 12 to 14 percent of the plant's total weight. Harvest too early, and yield suffers. Too late and sugar content diminishes. That carefully timed harvest now faces machines that would make medieval torture devices look tame. When those innocent-looking stalks meet industrial crushers applying 230 tons of pressure, roughly the weight of a Boeing 747, they surrender a mysterious green liquid that bears absolutely no resemblance to the white crystals you'd recognize as sugar. In fact, this initial juice is so acidic and murky that you'd never guess its sweet destiny. When truckloads of sugarcane arrive at the factory gates, they undergo intensive cleaning. Powerful water jets blast away field debris while rotating combing drums simultaneously remove rocks, soil particles, and loose leaves. This effective cleaning system prepares the cane for processing. The clean cane then moves toward the heart of the operation, the milling tandem. This sequence of massive crusher machines features first stage rollers that break down the tough exterior, middle crushers that extract the majority of juice, final compression units that squeeze remaining liquid from flattened fibers. Each set applies progressively more pressure, with the cane literally crushed flat as it passes through. Factory engineers maximize extraction with a technique called imbibition. They spray hot water onto the already crushed cane, similar to how you'd rinse a sugar-soaked sponge to recover dissolved sweetness. This approach dissolves sugar molecules still clinging to plant fibers, pushing extraction rates above 95%. The resulting juice emerges as a dark green, highly acidic liquid filled with suspended solids. 
This raw solution would quickly spoil without immediate processing. Clarification begins by adding two essential chemicals, lime, calcium hydroxide, and sulfur dioxide. The lime neutralizes natural acidity and causes impurities to clump together, while sulfur dioxide prevents microbial growth that would degrade valuable sucrose. During alkalization, powdered lime mixed with water transforms the raw juice from brown to yellow over approximately six hours. In clarification tanks, heavier particles settle to the bottom while lighter materials float upward. This allows operators to draw clarified juice from the middle section, representing a delicate balance between removing impurities and preserving sucrose for subsequent production stages. That clarified juice might look ready for sweetening your coffee, but it's nowhere near becoming the crystals you recognize. With only 15% sugar content, this liquid needs a dramatic transformation removing over two-thirds of its water without burning the precious sucrose molecules inside. The evaporator system works as a cascading waterfall of heat, with steam from each chamber heating the next in sequence. This design significantly reduces energy consumption while gradually concentrating the sugar solution. Each chamber operates at progressively lower pressure, allowing the liquid to boil at cooler temperatures, often around 130 degrees Fahrenheit instead of 212 degrees Fahrenheit, preventing sugar from caramelizing as concentration increases. As the juice travels through these chambers, it transforms from a thin, light-colored liquid into a viscous amber syrup containing about 60% sugar. This concentration represents a critical step toward crystallization Though the solution still needs further processing to form the familiar granules, the vacuum pan continues this transformation, evaporating more water under carefully controlled conditions until the syrup becomes supersaturated, holding more dissolved sugar than should naturally remain in solution. The liquid exists in a suspended state, ready to solidify but lacking the trigger to begin. This trigger comes through seeding introducing a suspension of pure sucrose microcrystals into the supersaturated syrup. These tiny seed crystals serve as attachment points for dissolved sugar molecules, similar to how ice crystals form in clouds. Dissolved sugar molecules naturally gravitate toward these seeds, building increasingly larger structures. Throughout this process, operators maintain precise control over temperature and pressure to ensure uniform crystal growth. The process requires balancing rapid production with crystal quality. Too fast creates irregular crystals. Too slow reduces efficiency. The result is massequate, a thick mixture containing perfectly formed sugar crystals suspended in molasses. This mixture moves to crystallizers, where it's slowly stirred and cooled, maximizing sugar recovery as additional crystals form from the remaining syrup. This industrial process harnesses the same molecular principles that create perfect snowflakes in nature, but under precise control that ensures consistent, high-quality crystals with uniform characteristics. A remarkable fusion of natural science and engineering precision. While nature might take months to form crystals in caves, our sugar crystals develop in hours. But that's not even the most impressive part. The real marvel happens next. When these carefully grown crystals get flung through machines spinning faster than race car engines, just to separate them from the sticky molasses, holding them captive. The masacuite, that thick mixture of sugar crystals and molasses, resembles wet brown sand as it enters the centrifuges. These industrial spinning machines reach speeds between 1,000 to 2,800 revolutions per minute, creating centrifugal force exceeding 1,000 times gravity's pull. Imagine being on the world's most intense roller coaster, except these sugar crystals experience this extreme force as their everyday journey. During this high speed spin, molasses gets thrown outward through tiny perforations in the centrifuge basket, while crystals remain trapped inside. A critical separation that directly impacts yield, profit, and quality. As the spinning continues, fine jets of clean water spray across the crystals washing away stubborn molasses from their surface. This washing step determines the final color and purity, transforming the brown mixture into the white crystals we recognize. The crystals emerge clean, but dangerously wet. Without proper drying, they would quickly clump together in storage, compromising quality and shelf life. Massive drum dryers come to the rescue, with hot air circulating at precisely 120 degrees Celsius, 248 degrees Fahrenheit. 
reducing moisture content to approximately 0.02%. This precision balancing act requires constant monitoring. Even a few degrees too hot could damage the crystals, while too cool would leave unwanted moisture behind. Once perfectly dried, the crystals bounce along vibrating screens with different sized mesh, creating everything from fine powdery varieties to larger crystals for your morning coffee. Finally, automated packaging systems fill bags at impressive speeds, constantly monitoring weight and quality. What's fascinating is how this intense journey, from spinning at forces that would crush a human to precision drying systems, creates the exact texture and moisture content we've come to expect when pouring sugar into our tea or sprinkling it on cereal. Each crystal has survived extreme forces to reach your kitchen table. And there you have it, the complete journey from sugarcane stalk to the sweet crystals in your kitchen. Sugar production represents one of humanity's oldest continuous industries, dating back to 8000 BC in New Guinea. From harvesting to crushing, boiling to crystallizing, filtering to packaging. Each step refines this tropical grass into perfect crystals. Our ancestors would recognize the basic principles, but would marvel at today's manufacturing scale. Modern factories blend centuries-old chemical knowledge with cutting-edge automation, creating a remarkable fusion of tradition and technology. Next time you sweeten your coffee, remember the incredible journey behind each sparkling grain.